Uh, good afternoon. My name is Yelena Avram. As uh, uh, Tina said before, I'm from uh, Georgiev Psyche Technical University of Yash. And uh, what I liked all the time is to think about how you, we should all ideate, like work collaboratively and ideate as efficiently as you is that as do is possible. And I hope you all see this. So I called it how to bring or what to do basically to bring the ideation into your classroom and a small introduction uh, of the activities which I've basically uh, proposed and one, a part of them were done during my own classes so I could uh, uh, look for the progress if it's interesting or not. Or not. So my main objective when I proposed those activities was to increase students' engagement, which is really uh, hard sometimes to do maybe, and to bring this scenario building uh, methodology uh, as it's proposed also and used by Harvard Business School, for instance, in uh, our own classes. And I started with the challenge or innovation. I liked the, the idea promoted by Karen Frasca that innovation is uh, the whole journey. It's not not linear. It's always should be messy, chaotic. If you want really to have a lot of ideas, and what was more interesting that don't assume that you know things. Just ideate and ah, uh, and afterwards draw your conclusion from this and. Uh, the idea that you don't have any limitation from the scratch before you pick your challenge. It's like, it's the start point. It's from the scratch. I enjoyed a lot of those uh, considerations. So I took here uh, some works which inspired me in uh, thinking about those activities, as you can see, especially the Open Minds Conference, where, which I tended to. And... Uh, I've managed to see a lot of examples different of how to engage students. So my first activity was about meet your neighbor. Why meet your neighbor? Uh, what I've learned in past 10 years of teaching that sometimes our students don't self-assess them really clearly and uh, like objectively. So make them new themselves, first of all. Acknowledge what, what abilities we have so basically, first activity is about how to self-assess and make make it present it to the whole group you have. So if you have a group of 30 people, you will present yourself in three words, main keywords, which describe you the best for the whole 29, the rest 29. Why it is important? Because um, I wanted the group to not be as they usually formed, like to totally um, not go for I'm based on friendship, but based on knowledge, based on what abilities they have, based on their hobbies. Because usually when you have a technical hobby, for instance, you learn a lot more there for your hobby. So what is important here is that the group for ideation to not be formed based on friendships or based on acquaintance, but mostly on some objective criteria, I would need you because you are communicative. You might want to present better or you know how to present better different uh, informations, for instance. Uh, what you see here is a sketch of the process because after forming group, the ideation process starts. Uh, in fact, it starts. So from this point of view, First thing is to um, to choose a wide umbrella or wide topic. So I give some uh, examples of the need or the problem, the topics uh, where professor can give them the, the choice to see. You can look here because those are the main topics for now, but general, which are really explored and still need to be explored further. So from this point of view, when you, uh, they start with uh, a general uh, team, but what I needed at some point is for them from general to go to 
some specific. Um, why I did this exercise? Because first of all, it's hard to start to understand the specifics of different domains or teams because you need to learn to read uh, about that uh, a lot. So from this point of view, this brain writing, brainstorming uh, techniques is one of the best thing. Why? Because based on the team you choose, you start to ideate. So the first participant in the group should announce an idea. Once again, no box whatsoever. So they need to be really free in my with their opinion. And you start to do it one by one. However, what is different in this technique, which is not new, but is quite used, is that each participant should uh, continue from the previous idea. So after first round of ideation, when you will see that all the ideas are still general, you can in, uh, you can suggest first rule of ex uh, in, like exclusion, like think about now, if you would be a manager, what would you do? If you would be a designer, what would you do? And they still need to ideate continuously, but one after another. Uh, the stopping point here is that after at least two rounds of ideation, they need to draw one conclusion. So they will come forward based on all the ideas they gathered until now. They need to think about, okay, how can I include a lot of the ideas presented by teammates, because you will do it in uh, teams, basically, of six, uh, at most six person. They can now state clearly, okay, this is my main team. This is the topic I choose. And this is the challenge which I found, found out by ideating with uh, the rest of the group. Uh, the next step in this um, challenge, ideation about the challenge is to start to uh, look for the ideas which are good enough for me, good enough to be used. So basically, it's about how to disclose those ideas. And um, once again, once you define the main challenge, you start to ideate. And now the whole group should work to be together here. Uh, they should stick to the idea that, okay, we still don't have limitations. We still can come up, or come up with whatever ideas uh, we um, think are important. But uh, what's important here is the number of ideas. They should at least have at least 15, 20 ideas because uh, and all to be related now to the conclusion from the previous step, which is really important. Uh, you, if you can um, imagine, it's like now I have a challenge defined, and now I need to see okay, how creative can I be related to the conclusion drawn before? Why I said change the team because now is the part of drawing of collecting the feedback. So make a round of the teams or change exchange the papers on which those ideas are stated and let other people to continue based on the challenge. It's like you are using crowdsourcing in your classroom, you know. The next step in how to uh, create this ideation and to be more dynamic now is to follow or to block ideas. What means that? At this step, basically, uh, your teams should start to be really objective and uh, they, start, they need to think carefully about which ideas they think are okay to be used further and those are which they will follow and which idea are not really realistic or are not manageable, or it's not so easy to implement because this is once again, really important. So at this part, we go with ideas we follow. And 
what uh, it uh, what I used uh, basically in my classroom was for the team to take different type of sticky notes and different colors, pros and cons each idea, evaluate them. From this point of view, it was it was really important for them to bring their own knowledge into this um, approach. And first, they needed to start to think about the ideas which would be appealing to final customer, for instance, or to someone who will see first the challenge first time, for whom it will be really interesting. And again, exchange the team. In the blocking uh, uh, part, now you can define for the students which ideas or you can imply some exclusions or limitations. And one example of the limitation is hard to be done or it's not manageable or uh, it might be costly. And once again, assign roles to different teams so they could think basically at the same time, not only ideate, but start to be in the shoes of the role they supporting, like uh, I said before, be a manager, be a designer, be a programmer, whatsoever. It depends on uh, where you utilize, uh, where it's used, uh, this methodology. Uh, what's more important also, it's to get this pros and cons, because this will make for your students um, really will matter in uh, this big picture formation for them, and it will be easy in the last part, basically. And the last step of this ideation process is when you uh, gather all the ideas, you use some sort of crowdsourcing uh, with and collaborate with other teams, and you manage to extract ideas which were really attractive and interesting and which you have, they see, they saw some potential, but also the ideas which will be hard for them to go forward with that. And you start to build a scenario. So in this step, when I was thinking about this uh, process, I was thinking about now when you have a lot of ideas, try to make a combinations and depends what the challenge is. In my case, in my case, and how I used it was for business model canvas and value proposition, basically. So I ask them now summarize all the information and make at least three different scenarios of your value proposition. What will be farther? And this is the alternative solution. So you can basically start this process is stopping uh, when you really defined clearly the challenge you understood it you basically took all the parts of it what is attractive what is not so good what are, are the potential risks and what more important it depends now who you have in your classroom. If your students are more pragmatic, they will choose to describe it maybe in words or do in some sort of drawing. But if you have creative, you will have someone who will sketch it. They need to come up with the concept with which they will work further. And uh, thank you for listening to me.